गुड मॉर्निंग एंड जय हिंद गणेश कुमार दुबे साहब गुड मॉर्निंग साहब जैन साहब मॉर्निंग सर ओके आई एम ऑडिबल यस सर यस सर ओके हु इज रेडी यस सर ओके दुबे साहब गणेश कैन यू कीप टाइम यस सर ओके दुबे साहब गो अहेड यू कैन स्टार्ट thank you sir good morning sir and my dear friends nowadays everyone want to develop and to increase the economy of the country we have to do some uh, such things like uh, we have to uh, bring such innovation or we can also uh, make some companies which is uh, which are working in all around the uh, all around the world yes friends in next 2 to 3 minutes i would like to tell you about mncs and what is the role in india friends what is mnc an mnc is a company which has its business expanded to various countries of the world in the form of foreign branches or subsidiary etc uh, the operation may be controlled from uh, any one of the country and thereafter uh, they can have their uh, branches and uh, they can invest in many markets of the uh, various countries so what is the advantage of mncs friends as far as uh, mncs are concerned mncs make a huge capital investment in the country and accelerate the rate of economic growth it is also boon for the workers because it is providing a lot of employment to the persons and it is uh, also training uh, giving tra- uh, giving training to the uh, to the persons so that they uh, they are creating human capital and another thing is that uh, it is paying the way for social uh, overhead and uh, other infrastructure facilities uh, like uh, it is uh, also providing them uh you can say bring them uh, to the cultural uh, atmosphere so that uh, there is a playgrounds there is a, all facilities they are providing they are also providing a lot of uh, innovative ideas like uh, new technologies are coming into the uh, into our country and another thing is that ki whenever uh, there is a mnc they are having long term bonding with the uh, bonding with the government they are having that type of commitment uh, so that they have to do a lot of work in our country and another thing is that ki they are also uh, having some road map for the development of uh, uh, their uh, company as well as for the development of the country and society also but there are a lot of issues going on like there is uh, some arguments against mncs uh, we are uh, we are living in that type of culture where we uh, we uh, resist any type of uh, ex- uh, extra uh, you can say external uh, culture and for which if there is a person who is coming from abroad and they are uh, living uh, in our country and they are having that type of culture like uh, they are uh, using western uh, dresses and they are also uh, following another type of uh, uh, customs and tradition then it is creating such type of problem in our culture That's because whenever uh, they are doing it it will definitely provide such type of uh, uh, in uh, such type of uh, you can say hum unki taraf jhuk jate hain another thing is that ki uh, the history of india is of uh, colonialism uh, mncs and but even we have done a lot of uh, well things in uh, our uh, recent days like we have uh, uh, bajaj we have uh, dabar we have uh, hero moto cap and macromax so we are also leading in this uh, mncs and thereafter at the end i want to conclude that ki uh, it is the uh, means uh, future of the world is mnc because mnc provides a dynamic uh, support they are providing a lot of uh, innovation in in the economy of the india as well as in the world so uh, at the end i want to say that ki we have to think about the uh, balance of uh, these uh, mncs with the help of our local leads so that uh, they can provide employment and as well as it will also enhance our economy so it is the era of mnc and it will continue thank you sir thank you very much good dubey saab mncs are very very important players because they are on one side creating jobs making better lives raising the gdps of the nation but more importantly it is now a strategic assets also if you see all chinese companies everyone is feared about them other countries are looking very suspiciously because they are the extended arms of their expansionism policy so is it possible yes government can through these mncs reach out to enemy nations internal affairs and can manipulate things but we will 
talk about its positives it creates jobs it improves the life for example if there is a town or you can study survey how towns are developed which was the first mnc which came there or a big company came there and how it affected the economy of that town whether it was wisac in 90s how it boomed in its economy how companies came and changed the city mumbai pune are old cities but take the recent examples how hyderabad was changed by special efforts of chandra babu naidu how bangalore became it hub so these companies and mncs changed the towns economics raises the standard of life but when the state heads go to other countries how this business interest people travel with them and why they are the entourage components there are so many issues which we can see these are strategic assets because when mncs reach out to other countries they pool business of course they help the host country also in raising the employment but they are achieving lot of interest of the parent country that is how you need in the modern world your own companies establishing their bases abroad because then you can bargain many things imagine today how uh, some of the countries are setting their foothold in other nations chinese company they are having good just a moment good bases abroad in fact they are now ruling some of the pockets that is the importance of mncs market capturing is just at the face value but there is something more deeper so these are important things we are living in the modern world or uh, we go back to our own history it was the british india company which came it is a very uh, classic example in its conventional style and britishers took our company and uh, we were slaves so in uh, some changed form mncs can again repeat the histories of uh, colonialism okay who is next sir may i rahul okay dubey yeah. sir keep uh, time sir. yes sir yes sir yes sir rahul sorry to interrupt sir so we need card number sir okay ganesh uh, you take uh, 37 kumar you take uh, 48 okay sir can i start yes you may okay good morning friends my today's lecture topic is statue of equality firstly i want to say that there are different types of statues situated in all over the world according to their culture according to their any famous personality so etc each status have their identity have their unique identity like the statue of liberty in usa spring temple in china motherland in russia and so on with that was the ability of sardar vallabhbhai patel on the bank of narmada river the next statue in our india is the statue of equality in the honor of philosopher sant ramanujacharya our pm is narendra modi have inaugur- uh, uh, had inaug- inaugurate the statue of equality on the feb 5 2022 on the outskirts outskirts of the hyderabad located in muchintal hyderabad telangana the height is 65.8 meters ramanuja was the hindu theolism social influence to the bhakti movement He was born in 1017 Sri Ranga Badur Tamil Nadu the travel was across the india to advocating the equality and justice he composed the many work on the vedic scriptures and wrote the nine text it's called as navratra like vedanta sar vedanta deep and so on his message are to keep control your ego and 
डिजन people who lived in the society ramanuja brought the education to those who are deprived and the greatest contribution is vasundhaiva kutumbakam which means that the entire earth is one of the family according to the wish according to the vishnu uh, sant sant chinna jayar swami is the statue of equality is designed the expand ramanuja social philosopher and the message of the humanity so uh, last lastly years. i want to yes so lastly i want to say that he is the greatest great philosopher attentive towards the society and great efforts to the equality towards the society and this statue gives the another message to the other unity is the equality and power thank you okay rahul important uh, issue statues and especially of late we had big statues statue of equality is one of them why it should be there at first place it has got a very very emotional attachment as far as the country's history is concerned you see all over world what rahul was mentioning many countries have got important notable statues in the old days whatever structures were created there were logics there was some kind of uh, concept based things statues are important if you see a prominent personality statue is built and it gives message to the society and when india is building statues of such prominent personalities which were probably not known to the large societies in that sense which is required because we have to maintain our heritage our culture so from that perspective yes it is justified second is it is also a sign of great historical culture when you build such thing tourist places are developed around these things business interest obviously are there but you are showing to the world about your progress about something of great stature now sri ramanuja this persons or the great icons teachings are to be kept alive sardar vallabhbhai patel statue yes why uh, it should not be made only thing there are some politicization of such issues that is sad it should not be done but then it cannot be selective also there are many more personalities where we can go for such kind of structures good rahul you covered well but there was some signal issue uh, in between we were losing uh, your speech uh, okay who is ready now anyone am i audible yes i think it's ganesh turn okay ganesh if not ready gurjan sahab ready sahab ready sahab okay rahul keep time yes sir sure you can start sir good morning sir and my dear friends to make the nation developed we should develop our country in equal manner in rural or urban area we should empower our local and rural administrative body to keep work in very effective manner so friends next two to three minutes we are going to discuss about panchayat raj in india so firstly if uh, a panchayat raj a three tier structure in indian administration for rural development is called panchayat raj the aim of the panchayat raj is to develop local self government 
in district and zone level and village level the very important structure uh, in rural area uh, panchayat raj institute village uh, is, is at the village level that plays a very significant role in the development of village especially in area uh, like primary education health agriculture development women child development and women participation in local government so uh, still we have some issues with the panchayat raj on implementations and uh, for the working uh, way of working of the panchayat raj the first thing is the lack of adequate funds as we know panchayat raj is a uh, administrative body but they have no any uh, funds to implement and execute the task of infrastructure the task of education and health issues so uh, we should think about uh, it to provide adequate funds and also uh, give them the source with uh, which they uh, which can provide uh, them the uh, adequate funds for execution of task and other thing is interference of area mps and mla as panchayat raj is a separate body is uh, in a village but uh, due to intervention of uh, local mps and mla they are uh, affected by uh, affected by the mp or mla in in their working way and another thing is lack of finance due to uh, less transparency in this uh, structure uh, there are some issue with finance and also lack of funds is, is a main issue and uh, it also uh, faces by the in panchayat raj and local body last 30 seconds accountability so to overcome this we should work on uh, these areas we should provide them the the physical uh, fiscal responsibility as we should uh, give them the sources uh, government land to uh, to get revenue and also uh, some uh, some uh, sources to uh, get revenue and get funds Uh, with this they can execute the task at the local level uh, and also uh, to set up the clear democratic setup we should make the policies and I demarcation of function of panchayat raj and uh, government should also provide this incentive to the panchayat panchayat raj more compared to and greater to the uh, in present situation so uh, there should be provision of training for the panchayat raj members so they can uh, get awareness about the how they can implement and how they can uh, use the public funds uh, on education and health infrastructure so lastly i conclude my topic with this point panchayat raj is a good administrative body for a village but uh, due to lack of funds and uh, lack of uh, awareness about the use of funds they are not implemented very well if we will uh, we will provide the very good training and uh, incentive and funds uh, that can use it and implement very well manner thank you sir okay good uh, gurujan saab panchayat raj in fact in our democratic setup this is the basic structure and we need to empower it we really should look after its empowerment of course technology is helping us now we are connecting to the grassroots level through internet there are so many facilities coming direct benefit transfers are coming uh, the funds are getting directly into the panchayat level these are good things educated people are coming into grassroots level and functioning there there are good examples in our history where from village level gram panchayat a sarpanch has rise into the chief minister level these are the indications that our panchayat raj our democratic setup is beautiful only thing we need what gurjan saab was saying better training better exposure model model kind of uh, functionings and in today's technologically advanced setup it is very easy very very easy but slowly it is happening and uh, more we have empowerment at grassroots level it will be the strengthening of our democratic roots and it is must we cannot have a fractured democratic setup so these are important elements like center state relations we keep hearing some kind of uh, tensions but we have deep rooted setups we have 
panchayat level tehsil level whatever these bodies are there cooperative societies are there these all structures are important of course they are being misused to utilize at times but as we grow as we mature things will settle down okay good now who is ready ganesh sir i am ready yes sir who was there sanjeevni okay sanjeevni after ganesh yes sir okay gurujan sir keep time sir uh, sanjeevni you may start uh, i think ganesh is start okay i'll start so the topic for my today's lecture it is discoveries that change the world if we talk about the discoveries from history that change the world we can uh, we can list many of them starting with the wheel which was discovered to uh, which was discovered to lower the peril stages of transportation so uh, listing some of the important discoveries that change the world we can have the, the we can see the discovery of penicillin in medical sector we can see the these were the discoveries which were accidentally discovered we can see microwave velcro which was discovered in wood basically the it uh, stick to the trouser of the uh, the discoverer we can see newton discovering the gravity we can see the discovery of coca cola so these are the very uh, these are the accidental discoveries uh, which were discovered earlier and changed the world now we can talk about uh, unorthodox inventions we can see electricity being discovered by ben franklin we can see the theory of evolution by charles darwin these are the some of the in- important discoveries that changed the world but if we talk about in indian context we can see india has given many of the important discoveries uh, many of the important things to the world if we talk about primarily the zero invented by aryabhatta if we talk about ayurveda which basically tells us the science of the life from 5000 years we have been practicing ayurveda and it is given to all whole all over the world by india we can see the okay, discovery of us usb universal serial bus the re- uh, removable storage device being discovered in india and one of the most important and prominent thing which we which we indians give to all the world is the yoga which is which has been traced uh, for, as the origin through lord shiva and also we can see that there are many of the important scientists uh, born in india which has discovered many many things which were prominent and being used in the current era too we have seen apj abdul karam discovering the satellite launch vehicle satyendra nath bose salim ali and uh, cv raman these are some of the prominent scientists now if we talk about the current era we have uh, discovered many things including the space strategy isro has been developing many space strategies we have also seen web 3.0 being developed ai being used in climate change ai being used in medical facilities we have seen currently blockchain is being developed cryptocurrencies the <coughs> cryptocurrency currency is being developed we have seen the development of electronic vehicles currently we have seen uh, indian industry is also developing in electrical mode we have also seen many of the covid drugs being developed in india too last 30 so seconds I, i just want to say that science is basically a triumph of human knowledge and through science we can help the human civilization to grow uh, in a very good and educated manner thank you very nice ganesh uh, spontaneously preparing and good you have covered it well discoveries uh, in fact is it it is just uh, finding out things which were existing including the discovery of or finding the united states the world is really mysterious we are reaching out to the outer world initial days it was finding out few things which were there whether it was human civilization spreading all over the earth or maybe there was life but people were not connected so whatever discoveries and inventions we had in the human history they are fascinating today we are enjoying a very advanced life in fact in last uh, couple of centuries a life has changed but really there are some pros and cons of such discoveries you can touch upon uh, ganesh on such issues pros and cons with every discovery there has been cons whether it was ease of life but what are the side effects whether it was invention and discovery of uh, nuclear energy 
when it comes to plastic when it comes to vehicles when it comes to aviation industry there are cons more and more we are inventing and uh, discovering something new we have learned a biggest lesson that there has to be a balance there has to be some kind of forethought is there any side effect of this so this is the biggest learning from all these discoveries but we every time fail to understand it this is another dichotomy okay very nice uh, sanjeevni ganesh keep time yes sir yes sir you can start okay uh, good morning to all today my lecture topic is indian railway in july 2020 indian railway has invited private companies to run one one uh, 51 passenger jet train on long train uh, routes government of india is expecting a uh, 13000 crores private investment with the uh, with this move in was uh, it was announced that the private train will start from uh, april 2023 then indian uh, uh, india first private train is uh, lucknow no delhi is uh, tejas express which was uh, which was uh, annou- announced by uh, announced by uh, october 2019 then benefits of um, benefit of a private train in gen- in general with a limited investment developing developing country with a uh, with uh, to the um, welfare of the citizen over providing uh, world class uh, facilities then passenger will get access to world a class train uh, with a better pass with a better facilities less um, uh, less uh, transit time and more uh, safety government of uh, government uh, of india said that uh, said that those train will uh, will be manufactured in, in india under the make in india program if uh, that uh, is uh, really happen it was uh, it was create many jobs and uh, will uh, will uh, apply a uh, uplift uh, the economy which is uh, disp- uh, dispersing uh, need in the in the present time because uh, due to the uh, uh, because of job less due to due to the pandemic the yeah. then uh, this can uh, this can end the uh, monopoly of indian railway uh, indian uh, railway private players can uh, private players can instant a uh, comp- competitive to spirit and can be a bit more facility at affordable rates then challenges of private trains is uh, first is this step can uh, depend on the already existing inquiry between uh, rich and poor indian railway uh, clarify that the uh, clarify that the fares in upcoming private trains will be uh, will be uh, will be in the range of flight uh, flight tickets so the poor and middle class may feel uh, may be um, may fa- uh, feel uh, exclude- last 30 seconds with the uh, with the use of modern technology many uh, many jobs can become uh, become uh, re- reduce then also private train uh, private train may not provided employees opportunity as m- many as the government train provided even through the announced private train uh, uh, private train constituted only 51% of uh, percent of now there is a uh, there is a guaranteed that it was uh, it was uh, be created if the if it is increases uh, increase in the com- uh, coming year indian railway can uh, suffer like uh, bsnr and uh, air india so lastly i want to conclude that private in uh, private investment will help in uh, modern find uh, uh, modernizing india uh, modernizing uh, railway it will uh, it will give uh, use echo Access to better facilities, less transit time, more safety in a uh, in train, and uh, it is the government responsibility to regulate the price and make uh, make uh, the journey in uh, in uh, in uh, them affordable. It is also important to upgrade the uh, remaining trains too, so uh, that common man will not feel uh, neg- uh, neglect and dis- uh, discriminate. Thank you. Okay, Sanjeevni. uh indian railways privatization will definitely bring lot of good uh, facilities but there is a worry what exactly is seen now in telecom sector it should not lead to monopoly and especially some of the strategic things when i say strategic try and understand which is of national importance and which is really linked to warfare country survival when tomorrow war breaks out indian railway and 
erstwhile air india was biggest mobilization tools now air india landing into tata's hand though tata's are always for country but then there can be a scenario a private player may compromise the national security that is the biggest worry and nation should have its own wherewithal to find out how to fight should have its own capability so these are larger worries so maybe we need to have a little balanced attitude approach in such strategic fields railway is a very very important asset it is not merely an economic revenue model it is something more we have to have balance as far as railways infrastructure is concerned it has come up with very very good facilities and it has progressed a lot in last one century but it is our lifeline in the hour of crisis we don't know if it is totally private how it will be effective so from those angle also we need to think you can add uh, whenever it is suiting in your lecture at such kind of angle okay good now kumar yes sir okay sanjeevni keep time yes sir uh, kumar you may start okay uh, so good morning gentlemen today i will talk on a topic which is t20 cricket so gentlemen we all know that uh, we are greatest fan of cricket and cricket is one of the sports which is liked in our country the most so talking about t20 format of the cricket the t20 format of the cricket uh, uh, started in 20 the 2011 and uh, the india uh, backed the first position and won the uh, t20 11 trophy uh, and it was a, a decisive win over pakistan and it gave a, a morale boost to the uh, participants as well as uh, players of the indian cricket team so if we see that how important t20 has been in the indian sports uh, industry we see that uh, t20 has been uh, building a, pil a pillar for the various other uh, formats of cricket uh, such as the ipl which is the indian premier league so indian premier league largely uh, is uh, important for the revenue generation for the bcci as well as it is for the various players who are coming up from the under 19 and trying to have the international uh, scenario of the cricket so i feel that the t20 has largely affected and it is a very good format for the players as well as for the spectators because if we see the currently the spectators of the uh, cricket also want a short format where uh, the everything is wrapped up in 10 to 20 overs with a very fun and a thrilling uh, experience which they want so i feel that t20 is a good format but uh, at at that point of time we can also see that we are losing uh, the interest the people are losing interest in other formats of the crickets which are the test cricket uh, the 50 over uh, cricket and so we if we see that the test cricket is not so much popular because it is a, a lengthy tournament and uh, people often don't know uh, the uh, how it is being played and what are the uh, things which are different in the uh, test format so if we see that te test formats format basically uh, checks the stamina and the uh, uh, we can say the um, how the uh, team is working in order to uh when in a large format of the tournament so uh, if we see that t20 has been a very good format and uh, india has won once once in the in the inaugural and if we talk about the ipl the ipl has been uh, a very good format because it is generating a lot lot of revenue my favorite uh, ipl team is uh, chennai super kings and i feel that uh, i am i largely support my team so if i want to conclude i will say that there are some of the issues which are uh, related to the t20 because if we see that uh, uh, the uh, cricket also comes with some of the uh, we can say that conspiracies or some of the uh, match fixings but if we see that the match fixings is, is not a thing 
which has been disclosed because uh, it, it is uh, totally hampers the morale of the organ or, organization or, organization as well as the players but if we see that we should not talk about the uh, unless and until it is proved so lastly i want to conclude that uh, it will it is it will be a good uh, scenario in the future uh, that the t20 will be coming up with more uh, players and uh, i think that other formats must also be uh, uh, put up in front of the spectators thank you okay kumar good t20 cricket cricket has adjusted with the changing times need of the hour a real commercial model cricket has come up with t20 see the impact it's a by product ipl because that format was adopted and ipl was concept was coined and see the turnover how the auctions are happening crores of rupees a small town boys are becoming millionaires this is positives but the too much of commercialization whether it is good or bad yes yes it is a cocktail or blend correct in fact how commercialization can happen is a case study from one concept it was tried for other things also football kabaddi football yes in western world it is already there but in india it is all cricket but good a lot of employment is generated lot of commercial interests are generated t20 has made it more fascinating more attractive but at the same time we need someone who is cricket lover the test format is equally important to keep that real originality of the cricket as a game and uh, the techniques and all classic sense these are to be preserved because ipl is distorting all those techniques and everything so maybe the real fun is missing something like movie earlier a movie was thought out well coordinated among all players behind the scene whether song making or music or story line everything today it is very fast paced movies but still there are some quality movies something like that we can apply to t20 also but with changing times they have done the correct thing it has evolved and suiting the fast pace of the world okay good tejas yes sir okay kumar keep time yes sir tejas you must come good morning everyone today my topic for lecture it is illiteracy in india education system in india was very significant and unique if you see the age old traditions we had gurukuls and patshalas later on uh, uh, on the britishers coming uh, there was slightly changed and they thought of that indian education was slightly poor and we are not acknowledging the mainstream education systems of uh, mainstream education fields of science and all and because of them they tried to change our education system and i feel uh, in a certain way it has only helped us because if you see many of the uh, heroes of our indian national freedom struggle who are barristers uh, because of these education system it was possible for our indians to get education from the uh, britishers uh, so that they can fight back for our rights also we see many of the icons like vikram sarabhai dr homi jahangir baba so they all studied uh, outside and ultimately contributed on our freedom struggle and our upbringing and our development uh, later on after independence if you see illiteracy was our illiteracy was our biggest challenge so india as a government and also as a citizen we kept on focusing on improving the quality of education and a building up of schools colleges and even higher education institutions so that we uh, remains at par with our global counterparts uh, we have set up many educational institution and because of which we have seen currently the uh, if you see today's world uh, our current literacy rate is almost around 78% and in that also many states are almost reaching 100% or some of the states like kerala has al already reached 100% literate mark so it is very significant improvement but literacy in if you see in today's uh, year in the year of 2022 i feel there are some other challenges associated so increasing literacy rate is not just a problem but there are some other dimensions gandhi ji once said that 
there is a quite a difference between getting educated and getting literate so li- illiteracy uh, education in itself could not be meant uh, could not be fulfilled by the term of literacy if you see uh, today's challenges so we have seen that many peoples are in our uh, societies are there who are very highly qualified but are uh, giving chance for the uh, practices mal practices like corruption uh, even at a very basic level uh, we are not acknowledging uh, what our moral obligations to societies are so that does that uh, makes a sense and that separates the f- factors of education and literacy if you see the second factor that uh, does literacy the academic qualification are providing us employment or source of income so i feel uh, there is some debate and discussions need to be happened over this because uh, we have not been very expert expertise in our uh, whatever academic qualifications are we are getting and because of that we are not getting the right amount of income for our jobs right. also we if, if you see for example in a tribal areas the tribal women are practicing their age old traditions and uh, providing some things to the societies but because of literacy we can provide them expertise so that they can improve more and more and get good source of income so in the end i feel uh, in the today's perspect the meaning of literacy should be understand in a complete way so that we could be heading towards our super power thought thank you okay this is good illiteracy was biggest challenge yes if we see our own history there was education system in our ancient india gurukul system was there that was also a great system slowly in the modern world we are realizing how we are shifting from be getting basic literacy to higher education now it is turning out to be skill based education but in the bargain what tejas was highlighting moral education moral values to be intact otherwise what is the use that we are getting on one hand well educated well literate but the education is not really helping us as a nation as a collective society because it will be dangerous if the educated people or the literate people misuse this education for wrong things an uneducated or an illiterate person will still have limitations but once a person is literate and well educated and that person travels on a wrong track that is dangerous thing and that is exactly we are witnessing so there are big questions we wanted to be a literate completely literate uh, nation we wanted to have a better education system we wanted to have skill based education system because modern world demands everyone to read write understand the technology around be part of system everyone should be on board no one should be left behind but are we synchronizing for common targets common goals for the national interest are we able to achieve that that is the biggest challenge now the basic challenge is almost getting met that we all are getting involved into the basic literacy programs and education system everyone is now on board for as far as the literacy is concerned but the next bigger challenge is making best use of it positive use of it because if today's youth despite having reasonably good education and are not part of positive progress of nation in fact they are creating a disturbance in the society will be a bigger challenge for the nation we need to develop wisdom of living so that a disturbance is not created in fact the bigger challenges will emerge now through the cyber world imagine a situation where nation wanted everyone to get literate educated and the same educated lot is involved into cyber crimes how to sort out these issues because it will have no boundaries 
a person by sitting at one place can control many things can infiltrate into many domains bigger challenges emerging people are empowered but the empowered state has to be used for positive things it is becoming really challenging to manage people now hereafter especially the technologically well literate people okay ravi yes sir yes okay. <coughs> Maybe a little louder they just keep time okay sir yes sir you can start okay so today we are living in modern society and we use lot of uh, internet so today is my topic i would like to say the topic of internet the internet is one of the most recent creation of human it is a vast network that connects computers all over the world internet was the first connected in october 1969 today it is used by billions of people worldwide internet is used for many things such as electronic mail online chat file transfer etc internet is equally helpful for all age group nowadays internet connection is available in every corner of the world but like its advantages it also has a number of disadvantages many people and especially the children and the youth are being impacted by the internet negatively the internet is a great creation so we should always use it for good for us the internet has provided us with multiple advantages for instance it is a it is a huge source of information because we can easily find information about anything we want to know on the internet there are numerous websites among such websites google is widely used a uh, lot of uh, almost most uh, by most of the internet users because the internet can be used as a store of knowledge it can be used in teaching learning programs as well other things also so lastly i would like to say the internet is one of the modern scientific discovery has changed the mode of human life it is widely used for various purpose so sure, sir thank you okay internet is an ocean now and we are really floating into it very interesting phase has started internet phase human civilization wanted to interact with each other languages were developed we started communicating now the entire planet is together with the help of internet but if it is to be used for good reasons or bad reasons it is up to us we may disturb with the help of internet or we may enhance the bonomy enhance the coordination spread the love it depends upon now how we take it very interesting phase has started in the human civilization and uh, we all are witnessing it we may be the fortunate generation where we are into the different phase of human history where it is fast tracked world at least in recent past the speed with which the world has started moving is phenomenal in times to come it may increase further but at least it is fascinating now in fact in whatever i recall the speed has increased so much in terms of everything whether it is traveling whether it is communication it is really very very interesting but the more problems are likely to crop up that is our biggest challenge how we communicate and how we keep the balance in life that is interesting okay there are new joinees so we will save time 
Ria? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Just be at ease. Uh, Ravi, okay, keep sir. Okay, sir. So today is my topic is uh, importance of education. The the importance of education. Education is an important issue in one's life. It is the key of key to success in the future and to have many opportunities in our life. Education has many advantages for people. For instance, it illuminates a person's mind and thinking. It helps a student to plan for work or pursue a higher education. While graduating from university, having education in an area helps people think, feel, and behave in a way that contributes to their success and improve not only their personal satisfaction but also their community. In addition, education develops human personality, thoughts, dealing with others, and prepares people for life experience. It makes people have a special status in their own society and everywhere they live in. I believe that everyone entitled to have education from cradle to grave. Thank you, sir. My topic is over. Okay, Ria started well. Very, very naturally spoke. Entitlement of education, right of education. And that is why you could have come to next stage, that is right to education. In India, we are fortunate. We are living in a great country where it is really taken care for every aspect, including education. And little while back, we were speaking about illiteracy, how we are becoming great, slowly literate, technologically advanced, skill India, all those things. So education is a very, very vast concept. When we say we want to be educated, it is not only academic qualification. It is understanding life, it is understanding society, it is understanding politics, it is understanding the economics, it is understanding the defense mechanism, international relations, domestic concepts, history, geography, everything. And if someone really gets into the educational concepts per se from the life's point of view, that person will not have time. That person will be really um, busy with himself and the studies and whatever educational journey. And uh, it is the journey towards life's philosophy. So we need to continue our educational journey. It is a lifelong journey. It never finishes uh, restricted to ac academic sense. Whole life we are actually getting educated. It is very interesting. Whole life we are getting uh, educated. We are right from our birth. Maybe initial couple of months we don't understand what is happening. But subconscious mind must be working and it is getting educated. Till our last breath we are on a tour of education, voyage of education. It's a beautiful journey. Okay. Uh, who is now there? Who had joined? Yes, sir. Vivek is there. Okay, Vivek. Vivek and there is sir, one. I am also rendering a bear. Okay, sorry. From one ID you are there, so I missed. Okay, Vivek yes, and I then Abhya. Uh, someone to keep time? For uh, Vivek? I'll keep so. Okay. Go ahead. Vivek, you may start. Uh, yes. Uh, good morning, sir, and everyone present here. Uh, sorry, sir, for the inconvenience from my side uh, because there is a poor network in my area. Uh, so, my today's lecture topic is the uh, GM, GM crops. GM means the genetically modified crops. Globally, agriculture finds the itself <laughs> engages in a heated debate over genetically modified crops. This debate, uh, which features science, economics, and politics, even religion also. So, why make GM crops? Traditionally, the plant breeder tries to exchange the gene between the two plants and to produce the offspring. 
that's have the desired character this is done by the transferring the male uh, which is pollen of the plants to the female organ of another so who produce the gm crops most of the research on gm crops has been uh, carried out in a developed countries like america and western europe recently uh, however many developing countries uh, like india and china also established the capacity for the genetic engineering and the various uh, uh, multinational companies are also included them like uh, uh, bayer's crop science do agro science and uh, dupont pioneer and monsanto and syngenta etc so uh, what is gm crops a gm or transgenic crop is a plant that has a novel combination which is useful for the uh, human advantages for uh, genetic material to obtain through the use of modern biotechnology Uh, for example uh, we can a uh, gm crop can obtain a gene that has been uh, artificially inserted instead of the plants acquiring uh, it through the pollination uh, which is the natural process also uh, this resulting plants uh, is said to be genetically modified although uh, it have the some uh, artificial characters and a genetically modification in their in their uh, genetic material Uh, so why stayed by the domestication selection and the control breeding over a long period of time uh, so the current scenario of the gene- genetical crops is in 1994 the calagen delayed ripening tomato which is a uh, worldwide known as the flavor saver tomato which shows the f- uh, flavor of the tomato uh, uh, for the uh, 47 uh, hours also uh, the area planted to gm crops is a uh, short up for uh, 1.7 million hectares in 1996 to the Last 19 year. million hectares in uh, 2005 with an increasing proportion uh, grown by the developing countries in a uh, 2005 there were 14 biotech mega countries growing the uh, over the 15000 hectares or more and uh, in india Uh, there is uh, some controversies are going on the briti brinjal crop because the scientists claim that the, that is a uh, very harmful to the next generation and uh, have some ad- adverse effect on it uh, like uh, we have already seen that the briti cotton uh, what is the issue that uh, there is uh, some adaptations uh, right. are done in uh, so the briti uh, now moving to the conclusion uh, development is necessary for the agriculture purpose also uh, because uh, we have see the there is a lot lots of population in our country and uh, day by day that is a uh, growing uh, that is gradually um, that is not gradually but uh, uh, growing up so uh, we have to found the new ways to uh, new ways to produce the higher quality and uh, nutritional quality food also thank you sir it's over okay whatever progress we are having so plant world is also there crop world is also there genetic engineering is applied there and uh, we are probably it is needed also to increase the production increase the variety and uh, in that uh, pursuit we have done lot of genetic modification so there are controversies also whether we are really are uh, doing it good or it will be bad for long, long run there are some advantages pesticides use is being reduced some people are claiming when we are uh, going for modification in the genes of plant but this is a very very interesting area where uh, probably the crop pattern is changing and a uh, lot of varieties are coming if i am not wrong uh, vivek must be knowing being this from this specialized field tobacco was one of the first where i think genetic engineering was applied and uh, tobacco uh, crop pattern was modified but it is just a beginning i think lot to come uh, the crop pattern will change the farming methods are changing the rooftop farming and vegetable related things the urban requirements are likely to get uh, met with such kind of modern techniques because it is suiting uh, the urban farming lot lot of things will come good uh, vivek very nice topic who is next abhaya i'm sorry okay yes, sir. vivek keep time okay sir ma'am you can start now 
ओके सो गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडेज माई लेक्चर टॉपिक इज ई कॉमर्स सो बेसिकली ई कॉमर्स इज अ मूवमेंट ऑफ द बिजनेस इन टू द वर्ल्ड वाइड वे एंड ई कॉमर्स यूज टू क्रिएट अ वर्ल्ड एंड एप एंड मोर थिंग्स अबाउट द बिजनेस और ऑनलाइन बिजनेस अ टेक्नोलॉजी और सर्विस दैट यूज टू बाय सेल यूज टू बाय बाय और सेल टू प्रोडक्ट ऑन इंटरनेट इट कॉल्स ई कॉमर्स सो ई कॉमर्स रेफर्स टू कमर्शियल ट्रांजेक्शन कंडक्टेड ऑनलाइन the this means that whenever you buy or sell something using the internet you are involved in e-commerce for example amazon flipkart ebay olx quick and misho uh, so type of e- e-commerce is business to business that is b2b business to co- consumer that is c- b2c consumer to consumer that is c2c and consumer to business it is c2b so basically ecom uh, advantages of uh, uh, advantages of e-commerce e-commerce provide the seller with a global reaches and they remove the barrier please uh, elect- electronic commerce will be a su- substantially lower the transaction cost and the process of the e-commerce enable to uh, enable to seller to come closer to customers that lead to increase a pro- uh, productivity and prefer and perfect competition the uh, the customer can also choose between a different seller and buy most relevant product as per the requirement and uh, and the budget e-commerce also lead to significant transaction costs re- uh, reduce for the uh, reduce for the consumer e-commerce uh, e-commerce has as a, e-commerce has emerged as one of the fast growing trade channel available for all, uh, available for the cross border trade and goods services it provide a wider reach and um, is uh, it provide a wider reach and uh, reception across the global market which minimum investments it uh, it and that to sell the global uh, global global audience to sell also customers to make a global choices so geographically boundaries and challenges are the electrical <coughs> electrical reduce the customer can easily That's locate difficult. and uh, some disadvantages of the e-commerce there is a lesser uh, accountability on the parts of the e-commerce and companies and the product equally maybe or may not be the uh, perfect uh, perfect expectations of the of the customers it depends on the strongly can uh, network uh, connectivity and information technology uh, uh, information technology mechanical fabulous and can case of uh, uh, and in case of the e-commerce some uh, some highly risk of uh, of their business so lastly i just want to say e-commerce has uh, undoubtedly uh, e-commerce is become an important part of the society the successful companies of the future will be those that taken e-commerce seriously and dedication uh, dedicate dedicating uh, sufficient resources it is uh, it, it uh, to its development e-commerce is uh, not an it issue but whole business undertaking companies that uh, used to as uh, re- uh, reason for the completely re- uh, redesigning their business so process are likely trapped to the um, great benefits moreover e-commerce is helpful to technology and give the consumer access to uh, business and companies all over the world thank you good day bhaiya uh, e-commerce you covered well during covid probably e-commerce has saved us technology has helped us to meet our requirements and future is likely to be consolidating on e-commerce platform it is a win win situation for all stakeholders as a customer you get very easy services as a marketer or in whatever chain you are whether you are producing or you are in services so you are also getting benefited because ease of doing or giving services has become on this technologically enabled platform very easy it is just shifting the pattern of uh, modus operandi the orthodox way of trade is now getting totally shifted into a new dimension and why not if there is so much of development all around things will change post offices are getting closed now it may be converted totally into banking that's what the budget uh, was announcing it 
so e-commerce yes it is now happening it is everything is e-commerce now right from education till uh, whatever requirement yes uh, jm and e rupee tokens are initiatives to decrease corruption through e-commerce yes the government trades and tenders are happening on e-commerce and it is good good for the nation transparency but now there are there is a silent element about human interaction a person taking the jhola and going for vegetable buying interacting with people or going with an with a companion going with friends for shopping that is also an aspect which is to be deliberated upon future generations may miss this chit chat interacting in the environment okay that is put for thought i think everyone is finished we have crossed time we will finish here bye jai hind jai hind sir jai hind sir jai hind sir